Hi everyone, this is for uh, the exam review for your first exam come up soon. Um, first, we'll talk about the rules. It is a closed book and closed note exam. And however, you are allowed to bring a note that is could be a one side of an A4 paper and it has to be handwritten. So the A4 size paper is just the normal um the normal uh print paper like this. It has to be handwritten. So if you just print out my PowerPoints and it that won't work. Okay. Uh, if you are going to use some equations in the exam, and I will provide all the equations, and I will make sure all the parameters are well defined. In other words, you don't need to worry about um, equations. Please bring your laptop for part of this exam. Uh, the reason is uh, the first part of the exam will be on D12. That includes the true or false questions or multiple choices questions. The second part of the exam will be in hard copy. Um, it has uh, short answers and calculations and so on. So make sure you have a laptop and in there and it's fully charged. Now, no cell phone. Normal concept conversation between classmates, and this is not a group exam. Write down your name clearly, okay? The most important thing is please show all of your work in a clear manner and pay attention to the unit. Now, if you just give me an answer and it's wrong, there's no place I uh, can find to give you credit. However, if you show me all the steps you've done, and I can always um, give you some points. Yes, you do need a calculator, so bring, please bring one. I would suggest all of you to go over Make sure to go over the PowerPoint, labs, quiz, homework assignment, and in-class practice. Okay. So, in fact, if you could spend a couple of hours somewhere and review my points, which is 19 points, which we're going to talk about later, uh, one by one, I guarantee you will be fine. I never intend to challenge my student, but I want to know how well my student learned uh, so far. Okay, so make sure you review my points, okay? So the first one, it is you need to know, you need to know the SAP and the vocalization process. Remember, in the beginning of the class, we talk about uh, the history, right? We talk about the six giant uh, persons who have done a lot to the development of plastic. However, how you need to know, all you need to know is to know the SAP and the vocalization process. SAP is a what is your solution you obtain from a rubber tree. And the vocalization process actually is a, is a cross-linking event, right? It's to enhance the elasticity of your um, natural rubber. The second, make sure you go over your um, D2L homework one, I believe, is plastic market. I ask you guys to read the five pages loaded on D2L and ask you to, add, to answer five very little questions. Make sure you go over that. Number three, you need to know how polymer is defined. Polymer is a long-term macromolecules, right? At least consisting of uh, five repeating units. Number four, you need to know the polymer elements. You could have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, uh, sulfur, and other uh, elements. Number five, actually, I highlighted is you need to be familiar with the common polymer structures. With this, I will not ask you to say uh, write the structure of a PLA or a high density polyethylene. However, I will give you, provide you a few. Um, chemical structures and may ask you to match them, like to find out which one is high-density polyethylene, which one is PLA. Number six, 
you need to know the force holding the polymer chains, which is a van der Waals force, right? The uh, the covalent bond actually is the bond that connects the atom together. Here we're talking about the force holding the polymer chains together. Number seven, you need to know the difference between thermal sets and thermal plastics. And in class, we talk about it, right? So thermal sets generally cannot be reshaped, and they are insoluble in common solvents. While thermal plastic, you can reshape them, reuse them, they are soluble in the common organic solvents. So make sure you go over that slide and know the difference in comparison between the two group of materials. Number eight, or oh, as types of polymerization, we talk about we talked about two main types of polymerization. One is addition polymerization, the second is condensation. Remember, for example, during the condensation polymerization, uh, in addition to the polymer, right, we also have some small molecules formed. While during addition polymerization, generally you start with unsaturated monomer. Um, number nine. You need to know the effects of molecular weight on the strength and the impact resistance. For example, generally, if your material have a higher molecular weight, they should have a higher mechanical strength and impact resistance. Number 10, you need to know the molecular weight uh, calculations as well as the PDI, which is the polydispersity index. Um, you had a homework practice on uh, calculating the molecular weight. Uh, some of you uh, lost the point. Uh, one is make sure you do have a unit. The second is make sure you following the uh, the formula correctly, um, and also make sure you do calculate the PDI. Um, and uh, um, I have already loaded the solutions for the calculations on the tutorial. Make sure you go over that. Um, yes, I can guarantee. Yes, there is such. A, uh, question in your exam. Number 11, uh, you need to know the definition of a Tg. So Tg is a defined as the transition temperature between uh, glassy state to the rubber state, right? And uh, how it determ depends on the molecular weight. Generally, the higher the molecular weight, the higher the Tg, but at a really high molecular weight, the Tg is going to start to level off. Number 10, you oh number sorry number twelve. You need to know the comparison between amorphous material and semi-crystalline materials. Remember, in one of the lecture, we had at the end we had a table to compare their densities, compare their chemical resistance, their uh, thermal transitions, and their diabetes. Make sure you go over that table. They tell you a lot about uh, these two uh, categories of materials. Number 13, you need to know how material strengths depend on the temperature. Generally, um, when you increase your temperature, the mechanical strength goes down, right? Number 14, you need to know how to estimate the Young's modulus and how to calculate the stress and the strength. Uh, in my um, mechanical properties video at the end, I give you uh, examples on how to calculate these parameters. Although I made a small mistakes about the strain, but make sure you go over that little um, video and make sure you know how to calculate these parameters. Number 15, yes, you need to go over your material identification in the test, tensile test, the moisture test, and the MFI test. The, the reason I may is I might just grab some questions from the labs and put it into exam. The goal is I want to make sure all of you have um, participated in the labs. If you did, you will be fine. Number 16, uh, we talked about viscosity and then talked about how viscosity depends on temperature and the shear rate dependence. And we had in class practice uh, predicting viscosity at different temperatures using WLF equations. So make sure you go over that, your note, and be able to predict the viscosity at different temperatures. Number 17, we talk about Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids. So Newtonian fluid, the viscosity does not depend on the shear rate, while the non-Newtonian fluids depend on the shear rate. 
Number eighteen, we talk about the shear thinning plastics versus the shear thickening fluid. So for shear thinning fluid, when we increase your um shear rate, your viscosity of material actually decreases. If you increase your shear rate, your viscosity increases. That's a shear thickening fluid. Um, make sure you know the difference between them. Number nineteen is we talk about turbulent flow versus laminar flow. Um, versus uh, uh laminar flow. So turbulent flow, uh, turbulent flow. There is lots of mixing going on, and the, it is random. While laminar flow, uh, the molecules move in layers, and there is no mixing between layers. And I uh, give you a video on laminar flow. All right, this is about your exam review again. If you could sit down somewhere and go over my uh, review. I guarantee you'll be fine for your exam. All right. Um, next, I'm gonna quickly go over your assignment. So first is the molecular weight calculation. This is your um uh, your molecular weight calculation that you can see here I have MI column I have NI column and then you can easily calculate uh, NI MI and AI MI square remember here the square only square the MI then you use your formula to calculate the number average molecular weight weight average molecular weight and the PDI is just the ratio of these two and it has no unit. However, your molecular weight has a unit of gram per mole. For those of you who lost your point in your homework, please, please go over the keys. Make sure you understand uh, the calculations. The second I'm going to go over is your first lab where uh, you um, tried a different method to identify the common plastics. Now, most of you score a lot of the lot, majority of the point. Um, one place I want to focus on is um, is number four, whether whether um. It's a float or thin, it really depends on the composition, right? Depends on the ratio of PET to high density polyethylene. Um, number five, remember uh, the PET and the PS, when you put these two materials um, into the isosolvent, solvent, after a few minutes, the P uh, polystyrene seems to become soft and squishy. So, and uh, well, PET is still very hard. So definitely, PET has a higher chemical resistance. And the re reason be is P polystyrene generally is a more first materials, while PET is semi-crystalline, which is supposed to have a higher uh, chemical resistance. All right, this is about your level one. Your level two. The first is the MFI. I think all of you did okay. Um, so um, I want to focus on the second question. It's about the load. The load is about a twenty sixty gram. However, when you calculate the pressure, you need to take account, take into account the weight of the rod, which is sixteen three. 0.72 gram. So you plug all of them together and times the gravity coefficient, that's the force being applied on the top of your materials. Then the contact area is related to the uh, to the area of the rod and then you can find out the the radius of a rod and then you calculate the uh, the contact area. The pressure is just force divided by areas. I would say most of you lost some point here, so make sure uh, you understand. Number three is about the flow rate. Um, as long as you are between two to three, 
uh, gram per 10 minutes you are fine but again this the unit here it is gram per 10 minutes it is not the gram per minutes all right you can show me the pictures number the second question was about the moisture uh, analysis and you can find out some information from your data sheet you can find out the information on your test um, now you need to know uh, You need you need to know first of all your testing procedures. Uh, um, make sure you go over that, and also uh, and also the problem if you don't dry your materials. For example, you will have uh, you will have a defects such as a splay. You have a lower strength. You will also have a bubbles or lower. If you test the product, you will have also lower uh, glass transition. The last portion is about the tensile test. Um, make sure, right? Make sure when you report your modulus or tensile strength, you need to tell me the unit. Okay, for example, PSI is different from KSI, right? And then you also need to calculate the strength and the break by yourself using a simple equation here. I think all of you did that. Number three, I ask you to plot the stress versus strain, and some of you plot the stress versus uh, strain versus stress, which is wrong. Also, you need to tell me the unit of your um, of your variables. Number four, I ask you guys to show me the picture of your specimen after the break in the, and tell me the difference between these two. First of all, if you look at the where they break, how they break, you can see PC ABS is a brittle while the polypromy sum seems to be moderate and also the lung in the break seems to be low for PCABS while it is a little bit higher for um, polypromy samples. All right, this is about your lab two. Um, for the for the um, for other assignment like quizzes you did on D2L, I should already uh, provide you the feedback right away. So make sure you go over my reviews and I think you will be fine. If you have questions, just email me or call me or uh, stop by. I'll make sure that you will get all the help uh, you need. All right, that's all. Bye.